It's Thursday, May 24th, and you're listening to the Geek at Geek News Central, show number 768, sponsored in part by GoDaddy.com. Save 25% on a one-year, fourth-generation hosting account by using the promo code NAB. Geek News Central is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Hey, folks, I'm uh, live from my hotel room last night here in Washington, D.C., getting ready to head out uh, uh, basically uh, Saturday morning to uh, head home. But uh, I know many of you are getting re- uh, ready to go on your Memorial Day weekend, a little beach action for some of you. But uh, we're streaming live tonight via my iPad. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Yeah, we've got it uh, uh, basically uh, basically attached to it with my, uh, with my laptop here. So pretty cool. So anyway, we'll see how the show goes. Uh, you guys know exactly what comes next. Uh, strap in. Here it comes. <laughs> This is the Geek News Central Podcast, part of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. So grab a cup of coffee, take a seat, and crank up that volume. Because you're listening to Todd on the Geek News Central Podcast. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central Podcast, coming to you as live as it can be from Washington, D.C. via the Geek News Central high-definition portable media studio. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I want to give all of the Ohana and listeners from around the world a, uh, a big warm welcome. And of course, I want to welcome you to the show. For those of you that have uh, are checking us out for the very first time, uh, basically I'm normally doing this show out of my studio in Honolulu, but I've been here in Washington, D.C., uh, doing some business over the past week. Absolutely enjoying my stay. Weather's been absolutely beautiful. But I want to make sure that you uh, take some time and, and check out Geek News Central. And uh, really, all you got to do, and if I can transform here to what I need to show you, and see if this is going to work. Yes, it will. You All you got to do is go over to geeknewscentral.com. Uh, check out all the great content. Of course, check out our archive podcast via the podcast link on the website. You're going to find a way to subscribe there, and it's real simple. That orange block on the uh, on the main page. All you got to do is uh, grab an RSS feed, iTunes, or Zoom Marketplace. Get subscribed with your favorite podcatcher, and that way you'll be able to uh, stay subscribed to the show and uh, make sure you don't miss a single episode. And of course, you want to check out our other shows on the network as well at uh, The Robot Underpants, Gadget Professor, Saturday Morning Tech, our special media events, and, of course, the Chrome Show. Well, I tell you, we're uh, had this, it's been an interesting uh, week here in D.C., and uh, I've learned a lot about uh, what's uh, how this new studio is working, and we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. But I want to remind you that it's really the best way to reach out to the show. You know, you can do this a multitude of ways. Uh, number one, you can reach me at Twitter, at Geek News, and uh, just follow me over there, or even on Google+, Plus or uh, on our Facebook page as well. You can email me here, geeknews at gmail.com, geeknews at gmail.com, or you can call our hotline at 619-342-7365. Again, 619-342-7365. We want to thank one of our sponsors here at the show tonight and make sure we take care of them tonight. You know, GoDaddy's been a sponsor here at Geek News Central for really for a really long time. And they've been able to save you and me a lot of money uh, over the past number of years. And, and we've got some great deals um, for you. Of course, you can always visit geeknewcentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. All my promo codes are there where you can save 15% off any order $20 or more by using the code GEEK5. Todd20 will save you 20% on a one-year shared hosting account. Todd will save you 10% on non-domain orders. ComSale will get you $799.com. ComSale3 gets you $840.com renewals and a whole bunch of other codes. But we've got two specials going on this month. Um, If you're a new customer, if you've never, ever had an account with GoDaddy, all you really have to do is go over to GoDaddy.com, and when you pick out all your products and services that you're going to buy, sign up for a new account and use the promo code 25MAY3, 25MAY3, and it'll save you 25% on your entire order. Of course, with a special offer of using the promo code NAB, you can save an extra 25% on web hosting plans of 12 months or more. Of course, plans start uh, anywhere from $4.24 a month all the way up to about $12 a month. Great way to save a lot of money 
um, at GoDaddy by using my NAB uh, promo code. So you want to thank, of course, the folks over at uh, GoDaddy for being a longtime sponsor here. And we want you to show your love by going over there and picking up one of their products or services. As you can see, I'm juggling here. And I'm not as quick tonight on the one-hand draw. I have to use two machines <laughs> to do this uh, show in this current setup. Um, but I thought I would just uh, take just a second and talk about how the setup works and how we're doing this. Basically, um, on the PC right in front of me, which has all the links to all the content that I'm going to talk about tonight, I have an HDMI uh, cable coming out going into my ATEM television studio, uh, which allows me to switch between uh, this camera here. We can have up to four video sources. Uh, while I'm uh, basically traveling like this, it's only going to be a single camera source and the um, input from the laptop. So I can switch back and forth from the uh, really at will with a web host. I mean, unlike the uh, TriCaster, there's no auto takedown. There's no auto follow. So I actually have to take the lower third down in Wirecast. So really what's going on is out of the uh, high definition mobile broadcast studio, we uh, fire, uh, we do a Thunderbolt port into the uh, MacBook Pro uh, from a Blackmagic design card. It comes into Wirecast and basically it's it's all in one. And the best part of it is my CPU on my Mac is only running about 50 or 60 percent, which is uh, really awesome in this type of a setup. And I can do a lot more things with it here than I normally do, including the the recording, which we're still working on. I think the recording was a little fuzzy, so it'll take a little time to uh, really get that dialed in to where I want it to be. And it'll help when we get the green screen, so I'll have the green screen in back and uh, not have to see, you know, the hotel room behind me. But um, I want to give you guys an update here. I got a call this afternoon uh, late from my mom. Uh, my grandfather um, is basically my last living grandparent is uh, on my dad's side is uh, not doing well tonight so i'm kind of on pins and needles here deciding uh, what to do whether i'm going to uh, uh, take off out of dc tomorrow head to michigan or if i am going to go home and then kind of wait and see what happens and if i have to come back come back um, really have nothing here uh, with me to have to you know if, the, if something happens and i need to come back i'm going to have to go home anyway um, so, you know, long story short, that's kind of where we're at. And uh, um, he's had some challenges over the past uh, year or so. But uh, who knows? He's he's strong as an ox. He uh, Hopefully he'll pull through. But uh, anyway, my mom is uh, supposed to send me an update here. So I'm actually uh, waiting for the phone to, uh, to buzz. And if he's able to talk, she was going to ring me. So um, the, if the show may get interrupted if she calls, that uh, takes priority over anything else. Hey, I do want to talk about the last winner. When I went through and basically did some checking, Sonia Jensen, um, I think what ended up happening is I think we had a husband and wife uh, win one, a uh, husband win the previous show and the wife win uh, this show. Completely random pick, but I got an email um, from. Uh, um, from Sonia's husband, say, hey, I was the one that put her entry in in the survey. I didn't think it was fair that I uh, won a second contest in a row. And uh, I, pr I really do um, appreciate um, his forthrightness. And so what I've done is I am now going to, basically, we're going to give two prizes away tonight. So the last winner's contest for the survey, again, was um, who has basically asked not to be uh, considered a winner. So I'm going to give the contest uh, to Jerry McFalls. Um, and Jerry is out, out of Portland, Oregon. So Jerry, you are our last, last contest or last contest winner. Um, so we congratulate you and um, uh, same prize applies. And then tonight's winner is Tom Tom, you didn't give me a last name, but you have a Comcast.com address. <laughs> so um, today's winner was basically providing me feedback on the video from the last show and the new studio and how it worked. So congratulations to, to Tom. And uh, we're going to give him his chance, choice of an Apple TV um, or a Roku. So we get either one of those. And congratulations uh, to Tom, and I'll be emailing him 
uh, post show and, and letting him know that he's won. Of course, this is the month of May, which we are giving away a prize every show. Uh, basically saying thank you to all of our listeners and viewers of, of the show. It's greatly appreciated. I'm glad that you are um, continuing to hang with us. And uh, and definitely we want to appreciate your, your loyal following of the show. Now, the new contest is really simple. I'm going to take everyone that is signed up and currently receiving or will have received the newsletter or signed up for the newsletter um, on Monday's show. Um, so... Uh, so long as I'm not in Michigan attending some family function, um, on Monday's show, and whichever the next show is, which I would hope it would be in Honolulu on Monday, um, on the next show we're going to give away um, a prize to whoever's uh, one person in our newsletter. We're going to do a random pick. So if you're not signed up for our newsletter, you can do that via geekandcentral.com. There's a link to the newsletter on the website. The newsletter contains really everything that I cover during the show and, and nothing more. Um, and you don't get random emails or anything from me, so um, do appreciate it. Now, one thing I did get uh, a notice tonight, and you go, of course I did say that I was streaming through my um, through my iPad, and the reason is is I got a call or I got an email from Verizon uh, ten days into my uh, current month says, "Hey, partner, you have burned halfway through your bandwidth already," and I was just like. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> I've got a lot of traveling to do in the month of May. So instead of burning all this uh, bandwidth, we're going to burn the uh, the bandwidth on the iPad. So it's actually streaming the show live tonight. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's what the, the actual is providing the, the, the Internet connection. Um, and we're on Verizon LTE, so we've got plenty of uh, plenty of pipe here to push with Verizon LTE. So uh, my Sprint card, um, which I use a lot for the shows too, which is a 3G, 4G device. I mean, it's been like useless. And I get no 4G, and I only get 3G, and it's it's crappy. And uh, so it's been pretty much a uh, waste to even have it in the suitcase this trip. But I, I will say that I've learned a lot about this new studio. I um, was able tonight to patch in the the uh, the show intro music. Kind of got that t- uh, uh, dialed in where it wasn't on the last show, for those of you that are watching the video portion. And then uh, had some challenges with the Motu interface to the laptop. Got that kind of figured out. There was basically Windows 7 was trying to take control, and uh, we got that solved. But uh, other than that, I think we're we're pretty much on track, and I think this uh, system is going to be fantastic so long as the uh, folks on the airlines don't beat the box up too bad as we're traveling. So we'll keep our fingers uh, crossed on that. All right, let's take care of the last piece of business here, and then we'll get into the tech content. Uh, we're already running a little long here and, and talking about just the general chitter-chatter stuff. You know, we develop trust in people we know, and but we don't really know someone we can't see. And that can be a tough hurdle in business with employees and clients around the world. Um, that's why I recommend and go to meeting with HD Face. It's really it's a simple online meeting service with group HD video. It's nothing like being able to see the person's face and be able to interact and change and, and adjust as you're doing presentations and, and a variety of other things that you do in business. So really with HD Faces, uh, with GoToMeeting with HD Faces, it helps you get better connected to the people uh, you depend on for success. And with GoToMeeting by Citrix, it just takes a webcam and a click to instantly collaborate with your team or clients in real time from anywhere um, in the world, even on the go from an iPad. Help build trust, confidence, and make meetings more effective. You know, I use this for meetings almost every day. Uh, I did one yesterday with my iPad uh, from my rental car in between meetings. Um, you know, so don't wait. For this special offer, what I want you to do is I want you to visit GoToMeeting.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code podcast. And I'm going to show you here. You know, I keep grabbing the wrong icon. Let's Let's bring this up. And uh, turn this over here. And, uh, yeah, too many clicks of the button. You have to learn how to do some hotkeys here. So, anyway, all you got to do is go over to gotomeeting.com or click on the banner on the website. And if you click on the banner, all you got to do is put in your first name, your last name, your email address. But if you go to meeting.com directly, again, there is going to be that uh, the ability for you just to click the Try It Free button. And then there will be a place in there to use that promo code podcast. And, really, it's simple. You put your name 
email address and promo code and say continue and you'll get access to that free 30-day trial. We want to thank the folks at Citrix Go to Meeting for being a sponsor here and uh, hope that you'll get of a trial. Of course, all our sponsors here at Geek News Central help me keep the lights on and keep me doing what I'm doing and uh, definitely appreciate uh, their support. I want to start off today with an ad, not an ad, but a article from GigaOM. And what kind of struck me funny about this, and I want to show you guys this, because I was reading the article and I said, oh, there's an ad on this web page. And this is something I've never seen before as an ad spot in a on a website. And as I'm hovering over this, this is a, a, a Google ad. This is double-click ad. So you see they got the standard banner ad here on the right, and it so happens to be a GoDaddy ad. And then it's got a Did You Know? It says GoDaddy DNS answers 10 billion queries a day and is available over IPv6. Talks about managing 25 petabytes of network data storage. Get, uh, GoDaddy moves more than 75 gigabits of customer data globally every day. So it's it's a kind of a cool little ad, and I've never seen this particular kind of an ad spot and it's completely conditioned for this website's um sidebar colors it's kind of interesting um and i just i was just you know the article is important too because we'll talk about that in a second but even GoDaddy's a sponsor i've never seen this kind of an ad on a website and it's a it's a lot different so um those of you that can see this actual video I'd love to just kind of hear your, uh, you know, not only just talk about how you see that ad and how it looks, and uh, but uh, lead you over to a page that, uh, let's give this guy a little free bonus, talks about uh, GoDaddy Tech Center. And so anyway, interesting move by the folks at, uh, um, at GoDaddy, but uh, definitely one of their paid advertisements on uh, the GigaOM website. All right, Google, let's get into the, sorry, it wasn't meant to be another ad, but I wanted to show you that. Okay, so what they're saying in this article at GigaOM is that Google takes down 1.2 million search links a month over piracy and copyright issues. Now, that's pretty, just pretty remarkable. They released a picture of the millions of links it scrubs from its search results in response to requests from Microsoft, movie studios, and other content owners. Now, if they made it this easy to take down content. I mean, we have a lot of people at steal the content from Geek News Central. I mean, literally on on a weekly basis I'm getting, you know, a hundred articles being uh lifted from the website and people just take them as their own and they give us no credit. So I was pretty surprised here. And here's a screenshot, um but well basically they provide a screenshot from their transparency report which shows who is ordering the takedowns and which websites most commonly host unauthorized content. So if you look at this, you've got um, uh, 22,000 targeted domains. There was 1,190 copyright owners, 1,035 reporting organizations. And I don't know what that means. Uh, really, I have no clue what that uh what that means but if they look at this they they have the number of uh, targeted domains the top targeted domains is uh, files tube for shared zippy share torrent reactor uh, bmp3.com and then top copy copyright owners was uh, microsoft corp uh, bpi which is the british record industry nbc universal raaa and lionsgate and then the top reporting organizations was um again uh markedly bpi nbc universal dt neck and takedown piracy so it goes in it shows you who's asking for takedowns and uh this is all in the basically microsoft i mean uh google's attempt to say this is what we're doing in the takedown of data and i think this is pretty cool what they've uh what they what they're really doing here so um interesting move by the folks at google to really lay this all out it's the first i've ever seen this type of stuff but it's um, available at uh, google.com forward slash tr uh, transparency report um, one word uh, google, again it's available at google.com forward slash transparency report and um, anyway give that give that a check out there's also um, in the news talking about it's a copyright letter that was an open letter sent to Jay Leno about stealing 
a guy's video. So apparently, um, Jay Leno, quite a while ago, in 2009, um, highlighted an individual's YouTube video, and it was some parody thing they'd done for a local a city election. And, um, and they actually had recorded this in 2007, so it was up on YouTube for two years. And then 2009, the Leno Show showed it in their, um, in their dialogue. And then a few weeks later, um, the YouTube video was basically taken offline for supposed copyright violation because NBC Universal claimed ownership of the video. <laughs> so here's um, what this guy has. And of course, he, this guy forgot about it, and he, he only went looking for the video just recently. Um, he says, I'll have you know that I searched for our said video on YouTube, and it turns out that video has been blocked, blocked by you. And then he uses an expletive here. He says, your company, NBC, just up and blocked our video and claimed that we are copyright infringers. Believe it or not, we made it, and this is the video that you said you love. Now, if you try to watch our video, again, this is a video that had nothing to do with you until you used it in your show on YouTube, just a big black sign that basically says, the makers of this video stole this video from NBC. NBC, so you can't watch it. Jay, what in the beep is going on here? So, this is remarkable. Here they use, NBC uses, they don't ask for permission, they don't inform the guy, they use the video in their nightly con uh, television content, joke about it, laugh about it, give the guy some views on YouTube, then boom, what happens next? NBC Universal says, Oh, that was in our television show. We're claiming copyright and it gets taken down. Now, I'm sure an oversight, but this is part of the reason of what's broke with the copyright space. And uh, I'm sure that this will um, resolve itself and probably there's going to be some, I would expect we'd see some dialogue maybe from Jay Leno. He'd probably use it. Um, we'll see where this goes. But um, the guy's, you know, good humored about it. But it was over on Split Slide, uh Splitsider.com is the site that this came from. Well, I tell you what, the folks from SpaceX, they have to be pretty proud right now. They're, they're on track. Uh, the world's first private supply ship flew really close to the International Station on Thursday, um, basically uh, acting as a critical test in advance of the actual docking. So the uh, SpaceX um, cargo ship flew within a mile and a half of the orbiting lab as it practiced a as um, a practice lap and checked out his communication systems. So what's going to happen here is we're going to go for docking uh, tonight. So if you are up and awake, the um, SpaceX docking, I believe, happens at um, 1145 Pacific. So if you're up late tonight, um, you're going to be able to, excuse me, you're going to be able to watch the docking on this. Now, I hadn't seen any pictures of the inside of it. The folks over at uh, Engadget have a picture of the inside of the SpaceX um, capsule. And I'm sure this was taken before the, the launch. But um, basically, it's, uh, you know, they got a bunch of stuff jam-packed in this thing. Um, they've got supplies and food and fresh clothes and a whole bunch of other stuff. But they're bringing up a ton and a half of material. So this is fantastic. We are, uh, we're just, you know, really hours away from the first uh, private spacecraft uh, being able to dock at the International Space Station. This is uh, really cool stuff. This picture, and if you're seeing this picture on the video, it is a little distorted. It was probably taken with one of those bubble cameras or something. But uh, we'll see what happens with this. Obviously, no humans on board. You know, it would be really, really funny. <laughs> And there's no way that uh, they got away with this, but it'd be cool if they popped the hatch and some dude was in there smoking a cigar saying, hey, what's up? <laughs> and, uh, but no, I'm, you know, I'm sure that will not happen at all. But again, you can watch the, uh, oh, excuse me, it's a, the, the rendezvous and capture, and they're not going to completely dock. They're going to grab it with the grappling arm and pull it in. But 11 p.m., 7 a.m. GMT, to see the live feed. So I don't think I can stay up that late here. <laughs> I might try because that's, you know, that's going to be like 2 a.m. 
uh, DC time and I have to get up in the morning and, and, and do a little biz. But um, anyway, that uh, that's what's happening. Hey, the folks at the Olympics, this new topic here, the folks at the Olympics can't handle an official parody Twitter account, so Twitter takes it down. And uh, I guess that the Olympics has been pretty graze- uh, pretty uh, um, pretty uh, aggressive here. So um, the uh, the the uh, uh, the parody Twitter account was taken down, and uh, so basically it has to do with the trademark surrounding the Olympics. And um, I think what people ought to do is. Uh, start some Twitter accounts like L O G or L two thousand twelve O G or you know set up some uh, some other type of uh, Twitter accounts that they can't uh, get you for uh, parody and so forth. But um, they were saying that this was and the thing was that the um, the Twitter account wasn't even being used uh, you know in a bad way and um, but it was the official uh, parody account. And, uh, but anyway, and also was going to be promoting stuff that uh, protesters were going to be protesting on the L- London 2012 Olympic Games. So I'm sure they were worried about that going viral. Mm-hmm. But uh, the folks at Twitter have removed it. Um, let's see what else is next. Okay, hey, the folks, this is exciting. This should be really exciting for all of you. I uh, found this uh, article over at, uh, at GigaOM. And uh, let me talk a little bit about this. Roku and Dish are partnering on a new foreign TV streaming service. And here's the important part. Um, What this is, it's going to be a service that will be sold to customers across the United States, regardless of whether they're subscribers of Dish Pay TV offerings or not. So what they're going to be calling, it's going to be called Dish World. And it will offer a number of international packages that includes a Brazilian Arabic, Hindu, and other foreign language content. So I don't have the full list here, but this sounds really awesome because, you know, not only do those of you that live, um, I'll see, out there are the expats that live outside the United States have trouble getting uh, content from the United States if you live in Britain or somewhere else, but folks that are expats that live here from other countries in various positions also have trouble getting their home programming. So this is uh, this is really cool. So this um, this offering is supposedly going to be expanded and potentially offering more stuff in the future, which is which is really cool. Uh, we know that some of the current bundling offerings already order offer like news stations and stuff like that, but this is going to offer more type entertainment. Um, so this is going to be good, and uh, we'll see what this. Uh, one of the notes they say in their press release says, additionally, Roku selected Dish to manage the launch and expansion of future foreign language channels and content on the Roku platform. You will have to pay for it. Uh, price will be anywhere from um, five bucks. All the way up to forty four ninety nine, depending on what you pick. But you can mix and match what you want to buy, which is which is really awesome. And uh, I'm excited to see where this is uh, where this is going to go. Hey, if you're in our chat room tonight, I apologize. I I have not enough uh, visual stuff going on here to be able to even have the chat room up and running. So I apologize if there's uh, stuff going on in the chat room. We're up. There's both people in the. Um, you steam chat room and also people in the uh, geek New central chat room so um we'll kind of work on getting that uh, kind of squared away so there's only one place for road shows all right siri storage habits well piracy advocates are, are a little bit concerned and um andrew one of our writers at, at geek New central put together a a nice piece and uh basically talking about privacy concerns um with siri so Apparently, Siri is absorbing your personal data. So if you use Siri, the voice-activated personal assistant that lives in the iPhone for us, it basically calls home to mama, and it stockpiles your voice input data, and and along with some stuff in with user data. So, you know, just think, you know, everyone's been asking Siri a series of a bunch of stupid questions at times, but it appears that is staying um that is apparently out uh you know, it's apparently in uh um in their databases at uh 
um, at Apple. So anyway, let me uh, hang on a second here. We, well, that's okay. Um, let me go ahead and continue on. Um, next article up is about Yahoo. Yahoo is introducing something called Axis, and uh, Axis is a new uh, mobile browser. And uh, so this is pretty exciting stuff. Um, I'm really uh, excited to see where this is going to go. Um, people have been raving about it already. And uh, so I think uh, Yahoo may be on to uh, something here. Um, I'm going to text someone here real quick. I apologize. Uh, okay. All right. So that's out. So this new browser is out. And this is really a, pretty much a bold move by the folks at uh, Yahoo. And uh, it's calling itself a search browser. Access to add many features to not only go to web pages, but also search relevant content with a tab browser below and a login system personalized experience. So this may be a, uh, a replacement to Safari on the iPad. Access is available on iOS and is a plug-in for Chrome IE and Firefox and Safari. So this is uh, pretty good stuff. So we'll see where this goes uh, from the folks at, uh, at Yahoo. All right, uh, switching uh, gears here a little bit. Uh, Dish Network, AutoHop, ad skipping device. Well, it's now an illegal shakedown or showdown with TV networks. So what's going on here is uh, the folks have uh, the folks there have uh, over the commercial networks have basically decided to file a, a lawsuit. So this is big. Um, in a complaint filed Thursday. In Manton in federal court, the satellite TV provider wants to declare that it is not infringing content or breaching the terms of its contracts with Fox, NBC, ABC, and CBS. And um, it appears that Fox has filed a separate suit against Dish to aggressively defend the future free over the air television. So um, this is an interesting move by the folks at Dish. And uh, they are um, really, and what's interesting is Dish filed the complaint. And uh, I guess this is a preemptive strike. Um, trying to uh, get a, a judgment for them that is going to... Uh, wow, this is, this is really interesting that they would file that. Well, we'll see where this leads and we'll see what the, if a judge will act on this. We, time will tell. All right, the, uh, the Mars rover is uh, every once in a while they find a pretty cool picture. And uh, NASA's rover on Mars showed off its playful side by snapping a picture of its own shadow. And the latest uh, self-portrait since the rover named Opportunity land on the red planet in 2004. Let me see if I can get a, a, a big one on this, if we can actually blow this picture up. And they don't have it too big, but you can... What's amazing in looking at this picture, and even it's uh, small on this image, is the amount of dirt that's on this rover, and it's still working. The solar panels are still uh, cranking away. You wouldn't think that the solar panels as dirty as they are that they would, uh, they'd be able to do that. But this was an article that was over on uh, ap.peninsularclarion.com. Kind of an interesting website. Once in a while, we'll find some stuff over there that comes through the uh, RSS feed. All right, um, over on Tech Dirt, broadband in crisis. Does the U.S. need regulations to force meaningful competition? So I'm texting here. Okay, I'm asking. We may have to pause the show here for a second as I'm chatting with my mom over my grandfather here. I've never chatted and done the show at the same time. So I'm saying, should I call? Is he awake? And we'll find out here in, in a second. All right. Susan Cranford believes that telecommunications in America is going through the biggest crisis ever and just as bad as the banking crisis was on at, on this past Monday at the, at the Freedom to Connect Conference. The Internet Law Scholar and former Special Assistant for Science and Technology and Innovation at the White House laid out what was wrong with broadband in America, hinting and at what needs to be done to fix it. She says the stakes are extraordinarily high. This has been an incremental crisis for a long time. And uh, she basically presented a, th a thesis uh, and some stunning numbers. In the last two years, Comcast market share has grown from 16.3 million to 18.5, a 14% growth. Time Warner has grown from 10% 
uh, grown 10% from 9.2 to 10.7 million customers, while DSL subscribers have plummeted 18 to rise the market share down uh, is down 22 and 21%. She goes on to say, well, it's good for Comcast. It's not good for American citizens. She says, with no competition, there's no drive to improve the service. She says the average speed of Internet connection in the United States is around 5 megs per second. It's down a low number if you look at other Western countries. South Korea, for example, is an average of 50 megs. And faster connection is starting to be implemented around the world. One gigabit connection is um, available in countries like Japan. Oh, uh, yeah, it does no, new, no use to call her. She uh, just texted me back that he's sedated. So, um the call back and wait. Okay, so um, she's basically saying that what does this mean to the average citizen? It means that the United States is giving up their leadership. And uh, she says the next Google won't come from America. And even within U.S. borders, there's a fundamental problem. Either pay premiums for media service or you let left behind. This is true. You look how much money I'm spending just to do my show on this road and having a connectivity. You know, I have a MiFi device, which I use half my bandwidth in 10 days um, of 5 gigs a month. My Sprint card wasn't working. Um, I'm now using bandwidth for my iPad, knowing I'm going to burn through it. I've been using my cell phone a huge amount this trip, and probably I'll get a warning at some point that I'm close to my peak on that. So, you know, at what point do, you know, look at the, you know, think about that cash, cash, ching, 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 I can count the any in here, I'm in a hotel, and the bandwidth crap, and the, the, uh, um, this room is, this hotel has 102 rooms, and I asked the manager, how come your hotel is so slow? He says, well, we ordered a 10 gig pipe, it'll be put in in a couple months, but right now we're only being serviced by a T1. I said, huh? You have this many rooms, and it's one point, you only have 1.5 megabits of connectivity to the hotel and i said i have higher bandwidth through my verizon lte connection than you have for this entire hotel and he says well i know i see you, you and you think 10 gigs is going to be enough and i said you should have ordered 100 gigs i said i won't come back to your hotel largely because your internet sucks and um it's unacceptable in this day and age you know, so, you know, why should, you know, you think about just, you know, those of us that are, when we're in our homes and we're connected, we're all, you know, fat, dumb, and happy. But when we're traveling, it's just, you know, it's such an issue. And the, on the East Coast is the worst. I, I'll be honest with you. Um, you you're in California, bandwidth speeds are usually pretty good. They're respectable. You can do business. You can, you know, you can do what you need to do. But when you are on the East Coast, forget it. I mean, absolutely forget it. It's, 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 uh, it's so, they're so far behind, I just don't understand it. I really don't. All right, switching gears here. Sale of unused IPv4 gathering steam. You know, right now we're rapidly, as a matter of fact, they, they say we're out of IP, IPv4 addresses. So a growing number of U.S. carriers and enterprises are hedging their bets on IPv6 by uh, purchasing blocks of unused IPv4 addresses through official channels or behind the, uh, behind the scenes deal making. Um, so basically they're buying as many IPv4, IPv4 as they can get um, because they don't know if IPv6 is going to be you know, fast enough. So we know that uh, designed 40 years ago, the IPv4 space has about 4.3 billion addresses, which are essentially out. Um, but, you know, Microsoft bought 666,000 IPv4 addresses earlier this year, spending $7.5 million on those bad boys, um, you know, or $11.20 per IPv4. And since then, several large bankruptcies related to IPv4 address sales have been approved. Um, Border sold 65,000 IPv4 addresses um, uh, for $12 each, and you know, it goes on and on. Now, as of March 31st, Aaron had recorded 88 IPv4, IPv4 address block transfers of more than 4 million addresses. So if you think that those went for uh, $12, $12 a piece, you know, r around $48 million has been transacted in moving IPv4 addresses around. So uh, we'll see where this goes, but uh, definitely a market there for those, uh, uh, those IPv4 blocks. Interesting, I got this uh, from one of our listeners. Um, he e emailed me this link. There was an interview done by Jonathan Ivey, 
course, Jonathan Ivey is the Senior Vice President of Industrial Design Apple. He's the... Uh, he makes big money. He's very famous. He's, uh, you know, a Steve Jobs right hand man, and Apple's chief designer, and really the, you know, the guy behind Cool at Apple, told a, um, a London paper, the Telegraph, that neither the iPad, nor the Mac, nor the iPhone is the most important product the company has ever done. He says it's a secret something he's currently working on that has his heart racing. He says, what we're working on now feels like the most important and the best work we've done. He said, when asked what we'd like to be remembered, and he was, this is when he was asked when he, what, we, what he would like to be remembered for. So he, he doesn't want to be remembered for the iPhone. He doesn't want to be thought, uh, remembered for the sleek uh, aluminum uh, Mac bodies. He doesn't want to be uh, remembered for the, for the iPod. He wants to be remembered on what he's currently working on, which is a secret. So, what do you think that is? You know, I'd love to hear you guys' predictions on this. You can email me at geeknews at gmail.com or you can call the show hotline at 619-342-7365. And now the folks at CNET are basically saying another idea for Apple's rumored TV and iDevice. So I thought, okay, what are they talking about here? Um, they're basically talking about, you know, Microsoft has that table, right? Their table computing product that was revamped last January to work both as a table and mounted to a wall. They're suggesting here that, uh, uh, they said here that, um, you know, potentially whatever Apple comes out with could be gesture related, be able to see reactions. So in other words, some sort of Apple TV. And they're making the same type of prediction. So someone knows something, but um, there's been some cost strategization done by um, some companies lately. And they feel that uh, the number of people willing to pay more than $1,600 for a TV set from Apple dropped sharply compared to those who wanted around $1,000. That people wanting to pay less should not be surprised. But it was important how many were not willing to pay more. Um, I think I'll be surprised if they come out with something that doesn't cost under $1,600 or maybe even closer to two if they announce something this year. So, uh, we will see where this goes for sure. And, um, uh, but, uh, lots of speculation and maybe we'll see some announcements here, um, in a couple of weeks out of, uh, out of California. It's being reported that Google's patent trial was seen as a near disaster for Oracle. The folks at uh, Washington Post have got this pretty uh, derogatory article about Oracle. And, you know, uh, a jury found Google, of course, the largest web search provider, um, didn't infringe on Oracle Corp's patents in developing the Android software. And this really handed the database maker a, a defeat in the trial, which sought $1 billion in da damages. We know that the jury yesterday ruled unanimously that neither of the two patents at issue was infringed while jurors found May 7th that Google infringed Oracle's copyrights, they deadlocked on whether it was fair use, denying the uh, denying Oracle's ability to seek a billion dollars in damages. So Google's had had nothing but wins here, and uh, Google will get out cheap on this, uh, ultimately a lot cheaper than what it could have potentially been. So, um, hey, my folks, my, my good friends over at uh, Blue Mike, they're getting ready to bring a cool product to market. And we talked to them at CES. If you were following our coverage at CES, you saw us do the inter or me do the interview with uh, Blue Mike CEO. And uh, yes, this is an actual microphone. And uh, what this is going to be doing is this is a you know a new product that uh, is going to have some intelligence to it. Um, it's going to know when you're talking and when you're listening, and it's uh, supposed to act like your ear and give better audio. Now this is new device is going to be coming out and uh it should be available for about uh $99. But um you know, I was when I saw it, it was only a prototype. So that's a bad thing when we're when I'm doing this show, I can only look at uh I can't keep the screen steady. I have to roll it. Um but they're trying to, you know, they introduced the Yeti and the Snowball and all those other cr uh, cool products. But this, um, the Tiki, is going to be the first USB mic with software that mimics 
human hearing. And again, it, the idea is to make it easier to uh, hear people during conversations on Skype and uh, Apple's FaceTime. So uh, we'll look forward to this coming out and uh, see if I can get a, re a review unit from the folks over at, uh, at Blue Mike. There's an article where Ars Technica talking about Tim Cook's changes at Apple, um, for better or worse. So we know that since taking over from, um, from uh, former CEO Steve Jobs in August, the, the CEO has slowly made a number of changes. Fortune editor Adam Lehinsky, who recently detailed Apple's inner workings in a book in, called Inside Apple, um, which is a good book. If you haven't picked this one up, definitely do so. Um, it's, they're basically looking at the culture, um, and the stock performance has been similar to that of when Jobs was um, had took over in '97. But the one of the former people that worked there believes the company is becoming more corporate and conservative, noting that the company resembles more of a conservative um, execution engine than an engineering-run organization, and. Um, um, he says that uh, any meetings of significance are now always populated by project management and global supply management. And um, he said, when I was there, engineering decided what we wanted. And it was the job of product management and supply management to get to it. And also, Apple employees who are known for the dedication and passion working for long hours appears that may be waning a little bit. People taking a little longer lunches, maybe not being so fast to rush back to the office, which may show that the hammer that Steve Jobs applied uh, maybe he's a little softer by the new CEO. But also, there's another thing, too, is that the CEO is, oh, my goodness, eating lunch with the employees, which is pretty cool. So um, a little bit of a move here uh, with the with the Apple culture. And you have to expect that after a change of, of leadership. And, of course, with the death of Steve Jobs, uh, you would expect the company to change a little bit. All right, over, I don't uh, normally link to Doc Searle's website over at blogs.law.harvard.edu forward slash doc. But Doc's got an article here talking about how after Facebook fails. And he basically was reviewing a number of the articles that come up, talked about their, their stock and their issues they had. But he read an essay by Michael Wolf in the MIT Technology Review. And basically, um, he talks about how advertising within websites and how advertising being delivered to us is becoming less effective and revenues and costs for that advertising continues to drop as we become more savvy on the web and how we deal with stuff we're not paying attention to the internet based ads anymore we're basically what's on your web pages but he does say that major mainstream media um, television stuff that advertising is still you know being effective which i would even question with the ability to fast forward through stuff. I don't even know what commercials are on TV today because I change the channel when they do come or I fast forward if I have a DVR. But um, so I guess it has hope for content like us and attracting more advertisers to our content. Uh, you guys have been largely reactive throughout the years to our advertisers and take care of our sponsors. And that's been, you know, greatly appreciated. You know, GoDaddy would not have been a sponsor here uh, continuously since 2005 if you hadn't. And neither would Citrix. They wouldn't be here as well. Um, you know, and that's pretty remarkable in itself. And I give a lot of credit to those two companies for being here uh, with us. All right. Um, switching gears here. PayPal has uh, rallied 15 retail partners for in-store payments. Uh, they uh, unveiled 15 national retail partners that include Abercrombie Fitch, Advanced Auto Parts, Aeropostle, American Eagle Outfitters, Barnes & Nobles, Foot Locker, Guitar Center, Jamba Juice, J.C. Penney's, Joss A. Bank Clothier, Nine West, Office Depot, Rooms to Go, Tiger Direct, and Toys R Us. Um, so this is big. You're going to be able to pay with your PayPal accounts at some of these places. Now, for me, Guitar Center would be number one, Office Depot, uh, Tiger Direct, all these places to pay by PayPal, awesome. So um, we'll see where this goes, but uh, they're going to have PayPal kiosk. So if you don't, if you've got a PayPal uh, credit card or one tied to your PayPal account, you'd be able to pay at these retailers uh, with PayPal, which is awesome. All right, if you live in Jersey, a New Jersey mayor son 
A New Jersey mayor's son arrested on charges. Oh, I guess the mayor and the son were arrested on charges that they uh, nuked a recall website. I guess a mayor of a small New Jersey hamlet has been arrested along with his son on federal charges. They shut down a website advocating the mayor's recall after breaking into the online accounts of political foes. Not a smart thing to do. <laughs> this 55-year-old mayor and his 22-year-old son are in the slammer for hacking his own the site that was going to be doing a recall. Um, the feds got a little egg on their face. The, apparently, the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, illegally GPS tracked a drug runner, and uh, judges ruled that they cannot enter 150 pounds of the weed that they seized during the uh, seizure that they were able to do because they were able to track the vehicle with a GPS. That evidence has to be excluded from anything that they uh, bring to the court's attention. So, uh, you know, they did not get a search warrant. So it looks like the judges are upholding the the ban and the recent court ruling saying you cannot do this. So uh, while I don't condone uh, uh, the transportation and the illegal activities involved with any type of, of drugs, um, you know, the, the, uh, the person that was transporting that stuff definitely won this time. <laughs> and uh, it just goes to show you that... Uh, uh, once in a while, the bad guys uh, do win. Now, he still has charges against him, but his uh, defense may be a little bit, or his prosecution may be, uh, uh, the prosecution's case may be a bit weakened if they can't introduce the uh, the weed as evidence. Um, you know, and you have to think about it. You think of where we're at in this country today, you know, and you watch all the stuff on TV. Um, you know, at some point, you, you know, <laughs> I think weed is probably more popular with, than aspirin with some people, but it just goes. To, it's it's amazing that uh, how uh, states have rules saying, "Oh, you can't have," and there's other states say they can't, and the federal say you can't. It's it's just a mess. It really, really is. And uh, uh, have to say that I'm, you know, at my age, uh, have no desire to ever try or have ever wanted to try. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's just shows to show you that a lot of people do because it's still <laughs> a very big cash crop. All right, switching here to more tech stuff. Um, I guess a, a, uh, a young high school graduate spent about two months living in, secretly in an AOL office. Um, turns out that's one person who likes AOL and uh, a Palo Alto um, high schooler um, basically um, worked on a project called um, Class Connect, and um, which he says makes it easier for teachers to find and imp uh, improvise interesting new lesson plans. Well, he got a little cash er, um, s some time ago, and uh, he worked on this project at ALL for over the summer, and when the cash ran out, all of his friends uh, went away to college, but he decided to stay and work, and uh, he'd work until midnight or later and then fall asleep around 2 a.m. on one of the couches at 7 a.m. And no later than 8 a.m., he'd be safely out of his field bed before anyone else arrived to wake up and go down to the gym for a workout and a shower and then go back upstairs and scarf for breakfast of cereal and water or Coke. Then he'd work all day, finally waiting until everyone else in the building had gone before returning home. Oh, this is nice. Hang on a second here. Hello? Yeah. Oh, everything was fine. Thank you. <laughs> no one ever calls my room. It was the manager. How was your stay? Oh, it was fine. I was worried someone was complaining in the next room that we were being too noisy <laughs> during the show, or I was being too noisy. So anyway, this kid would, uh, he survived on uh, cereal water and or and, and a soda, and, uh, but do you think his clothes would get stinky? How did he wash his clothes? Did he ever go home and change? But I guess after months of repeating this cycle, he, he has uh, gotten Class Connect up and running, and uh, now he's out hustling to raise a million, half million in venture capital. <laughs> uh, why didn't he work on it from home? That's my question. Uh... But I wonder if AOL tighten up their security around the building. I guess they allow people to work any time. <laughs> All right, solar impulse. 
has taken off for Morocco on the first sun-powered transcontinental flight. The sun-powered Impulse plane is gradually working up to a trip around the globe. This time they're flying uh, again. They're leaving and flying a very long flight to to Morocco. And um, they basically uh, are wearing parachutes. So they do have two pilots on board. And uh, they hope to complete the 1,554-mile trip by next week. Now, you do realize 1,554 miles in a commercial aircraft is like uh, from Washington, D.C. to Chicago, back to D.C. to Chicago. That's about 1,800 miles. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 50, that thing must just absolutely crawl. Going, it takes a, a week or two to fly 1,500 miles. That's efficient. All right, Facebook has a new um, application. It's called Facebook Camera. It's a photocentric application. It works. Its application uh, is basically uh, embedded, and you're able to upload stuff, and take pictures uh, with your phone, and send it straight to Facebook. So that I have that up in the show notes for you. All right, last few articles tonight here before I wrap up. Um, there's a new. Let me just show you this. This is really smart. Many of these uh, applications that have, uh, or many of these devices that replace a camera lens on your uh, on your mobile device are pretty clunky. But this clip-on iPhone lens is really simple and slick. So, thirty-five bucks each, and it'll slip in your pocket, and it'll act as a great lens. And you, and you basically, it's not clunky. It's not in the way. So uh, very, very smart of these folks in, in what they design. Another article here on Gizmodo is the what's called the uh, W1 PPS device. And what it is designed to do is take care of cable clutter for the MacBook Pro. And it does. It looks really slick. It's just, you know, you basically... Um, um, you, it basically looks like a bar that's at, uh, attached to the side of your Mac, and it kind of integrates seamlessly, and it covers up, and it just has a single cable uh, leaning off the table. Um, it's on uh, available for a $98 Kickstarter, and it's meant for the 15-inch version of the laptop. They uh, they want to uh, raise $115,000, but uh, this is pretty slick uh, device, and it's at least it's concept drawing. So uh, if you're into having neat stuff on your uh, desktop, this might be a Kickstarter project you'd be interested in. And, of course, this weekend, nothing like a, a cool bar barbecue tool. The three-in-one barbecue tool seems pretty handy. Um, it uh, works as a spatula or a stabber or even a, you can cut stuff with it. It's uh, pretty neat and uh, works out pretty good. Available for $46.00 and uh, available at 7 .com. So anyway, some good gadgets here for you to, to check out. But um, let me look and see if we've got anything, what we, what we have an email tonight before we get you out here. I think there was a couple of voicemails that come in, but I was negligent in grabbing them before the show. And, uh, oh, tomorrow is a, a Geek Pride Day. I almost forgot that. So um, definitely... Uh, be happy being a geek, and uh, and and uh, anyway. So tomorrow is Geek Pride Day. Got an email here from Andrew. He says, "Hey Todd, uh, this sixty, excuse me, this sixty terabyte drive is coming in a few years. Should help photographers and video pros deal with bigger and bigger files, but at what cost? So let me let me look at this. Let's bring this up on the uh, on the web page. And uh, Andrew provided this up, so let me load this up. Control V." So a 60 terabyte disk drive could be available. It says the maximum aerial density of hard drive disks are expected to more than double by 2016, according to IHS iSupply. Uh, while the data may, be, may not be new, hard drive company Seagate is all predicting a doubling of drive density. Um, so they're seeing leading the way for greater technicity with technology such as heat assisted magnetic recording. Um, basically, they feel that they could get to... 60 terabytes by 2016. So that's a pretty remarkable number, right? 60 terabytes on a single drive. I can't believe it. He got an email here from Todd out of uh, Silverton, Oregon. He says, hey, Todd, so you purchased two Mac minis and HD displays. What for? As you never use them. Well, Todd, I haven't been home. And we have done two Saturday morning texts with the new setup. Um... It's, uh, it's basically, it's been an upgrade to the studio, but I knew I was going to be traveling a lot this summer, 
And when I'm not home on Saturdays, we don't do it. But when I am home, we do Saturday morning tech when I can. A couple of family things interrupted. Uh, it is just the way it is with life. And um, But it was a the machines that were in there before needed upgrading. And basically what I do with the show is when I, as I can, I continue to improve it and, and you know, basically add more, uh, you know, uh, more sophisticated hardware and continuously, my goal is to continuously moving forward. And that's one of the reasons why the on the road show, why I invested the money in being able to do what I'm doing with the HD mobile broadcast system. I will dare say that there's probably very, very few people who are able at this point to put a, do a show on the road and record the way I've been able to record and show the screens like I normally do with their current rigs and 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 have it in a nice organized compact package that really lets me uh, work on the quality of the show while I'm on the road. That was the main goal here, you know, and being able to uh, upgrade the mobile broadcast studio and at the same time investing in the studio back at home to keep things moving keep things moving so um thanks for your comments don't worry we'll be using the hd monitors uh, more i'm um, got an email here from ms small biz he says hey have you looked at using evernote and clipping all the pages for the current show into a folder you, um, show xyz versus having all the chrome tabs open as you said chrome uses web too much too much memory when you open a host of tabs i have eight open now and chrome is using almost 700 megs as it doesn't release memory correctly and those add-ins or widgets or whatever you want to call them also use memory anyway my use of evernote as a as i find technically how-to articles he says that i clip the page or needed text and place it into a folder based on topics such as desktop server networking office and use tags well as easy for search this gives me basically my local knowledge base for all those clips um and I won't go into the rest of it, he says, but just some thoughts. I personally love the product and can't believe the level of use there isn't something that's free. I really should be paying $5 a month or even better, 45 a year for the ad added benefits they offer. I can't say enough for how good their product has become. Um, and anyway, I'll check it out. I haven't been an Evernote user, but uh, MS Wallbiz, you know what else? Five bucks a month will will get you uh, insider support here at the show too. So go to geeknewcentral.com forward slash insider. And we're real happy for everyone that contributes two, five, ten, fifteen, or twenty-five dollars a month to the show. It really does go a long way. You may say, "Why should I?" Um, you already have sponsors. Well, let's put it this way: if we ever get enough insiders, we can start reducing sponsors. <laughs> and uh, that's ultimately go. And also, hiring more people to help with the show. Um, so, uh, your support is always greatly appreciated. Um, let's see here. What was else did I have? Oh, I just got an email here from Tim. He said, from a reputable source, CNET.com, put all the iPhone 5 rumors together, and you get this. So he's got that link up in the show notes. Uh, I've got another email that came in from MS, MS Small Biz. He says, uh, talking about this is me considering writing a script to securely delete all logs weekly followed by a secure free space wipe. And this is basically in response to the judge that ordered the, in the Groove Shark lawsuit, ordered the guy to... Um, provide his logs, and he said, I already deleted them. The judge says, provide them anyway. And, you know, how do you provide something that has um, already been deleted? You, you know, you can't perform magic. Um, Jeff sent me an email, said, hey, found this interesting and uh, scary story over at securityweek.com. NASA Inspector General said hackers had full control of control had full functional control over NASA networks. So I'll have that link up in the show notes for you guys to check out. Um I guess that's it all right everybody thanks for being here as always we want you to uh to follow me on twitter you can do that at geek news you can email me at geeknews at gmail.com you can uh, call the hotline anytime and leave your thoughts uh, on the show 619-342-7365 really all you got to do here to qualify for the contest um that i'm going to be announcing on monday is essentially uh be signed up for the newsletter, and you're automatically entered to win. Um, everyone that's in the newsletter list will be uh, will be there to be in the in the offering. So I uh, look forward to giving away another prize uh, on Monday's show. Again, don't forget our sponsors: GoDaddy.com. Use your two five May three code for new accounts, or your NAB for 
shared hosting account for one year. Of course, go to geeknesscentral.com forward slash GoDaddy. Don't forget Citrix Go to Meeting and using their product, giving it a free trial by using the promo code podcast when you sign up for that. All right, everyone, thanks for being here and uh, look forward to be back in, back in Honolulu. I've got to pick up the phone and call mom as you get an update on, on grandpa and see how he's doing. Too bad I wasn't able to talk with him, but it, I, as she sent her text, he is currently sedated. But um, anyway, we'll see. I will keep everyone abreast uh, one way or the other. Something develops where I need to uh, make a run for uh, for Michigan or not. But uh, thanks for being here. Love to hear your feedback on the show, on the audio, on the video, everything. Want to hear your uh, your comments as well because we're testing out a com- completely brand new pipeline in this system. And I do know that you do hear a little background noise from time to time, but it's the fan on this computer is just running like crazy because I got doing a lot of heavy lifting. But uh, until next time, we'll see you. Everyone, thanks for hanging out. Everyone take care. Aloha.